Hello everyone, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, no matter where you are and no matter the time, it's devotion time with Miss T. I'm excited to have you today for devotion time where we read Bible stories, learn more about God and Jesus and learn how he wants us to live. In our Bible story today, we're going to read about Rebecca and Isaac. It's kind of a love story (laughs) and I'm excited about this one because there's lots of lessons to learn. A wife for Isaac and that's in the book of Genesis chapter 23 and 24. Sarah died when she was 127 years old. Her husband, Abraham, missed her. Their son, Isaac, missed her too. But now Isaac had become a full-grown man and wanted to get married. Abraham didn't want his son to marry any of the girls who lived nearby. These girls worshipped idols instead of God. Abraham wanted Isaac to marry a girl from the faraway country where their relatives lived. So Abraham asked his oldest servant to go to that country and bring back a girl for Isaac to marry. The servant loaded ten of Abraham's camels with beautiful presents and began a long trip. After many days, he finally came to the place where Abraham's relatives lived. He made the camels kneel down by a well outside the city. It was evening, and the young women were all coming out to draw water from the well. The servant told God that he would ask one of the young women for some water from her pitcher. If she answered him with a smile and said she would water his camels too, he would know she was the one God had chosen to be Isaac's wife. While he was still praying, a beautiful girl named Rebecca came to the well. The servant ran over to her and said, Please, give me a drink from your pitcher. Certainly, sir, she replied, and I'll water your camels too. So she did. Then the old man gave Rebecca a large gold ring and two gold bracelets. He asked if there was room at her father's house for him and his servants to spend the night. Rebecca told him who her father was and how her grandparents were. She also said there was plenty of room. When the servant heard who her family was, he knew for sure that she was the right one for Isaac. He thanked God for helping him to find the right girl. Rebecca's brother, Laban, helped the old man unload the camels and feed them. As the servant ate supper with Rebecca's family, He asked them if they would let Rebecca go with him to marry Isaac. They said yes, since it was the Lord who had brought him. When Abraham's servant heard this, he worshipped the Lord again. He brought out more beautiful jewelry and beautiful clothes for Rebecca. He gave her mother and her brother presents too. The next morning, Rebecca was ready to leave. She got on a camel and followed Abraham's servant all the way to Isaac's tent. Isaac loved Rebecca very much and she became his wife. I think this is a much better story than the Disney ones about Cinderella and Sleeping Beauty and all what not. <laughs> Now, it's my personal preference, but yes, I think so. Because this story is actually full of more magic, or will I call it a miracle, than the magic of the Disney stories. 
When it was time for Isaac to have a wife, Abraham did not want Isaac to get married to all the women who were staying around them because those ones were worshipping idols. They did not love God. And God wants us to associate or to be partners with people who love him too. So Abraham asked his servants to go back to where Abraham was from to get a wife for his son. And the servants did just that. But the beautiful part of the story is how the servants prayed and asked God for a sign. There were going to be so many women. How would he know which one God wanted for Isaac? So he prayed and said, Dear Lord, I would ask for water from someone. If she says yes and waters my camels too, then she's the one. And when he asked Rebecca, she did exactly what he prayed about. Only for him to find out that Rebecca was actually the niece of Abraham. So indeed, he had come to Abraham's family. Back in those days, people would get married to their cousins and their nieces because there weren't many people in the world anyway, so they could get married to anybody that they wanted to. And it was easy for them to do that as long as they knew who those people were. God answered the prayer of the servant and also the prayer of Abraham by bringing someone who was kind and generous for Isaac as a wife. Now, if you met a stranger on the road and they asked you, please, could you give me directions to this place? I don't think I know where I am. What would you do? Will you be rude and stick your face up and walk away? Or will you be kind like Rebecca and offer help to those that are in need? I think that is the lesson I want us to learn from this story. Rebecca's kindness. Camels do drink lots and lots of water, as we've talked about before. So it must have taken Rebecca a lot of time to feed all the camels with water. But she did it. That was very kind of Rebecca. So in this story, I want us to take this lesson away. That no matter where we are and no matter who we meet, we should always remember to be kind. And maybe... Just maybe there might be a blessing hidden right around the corner. Let us pray. Dear God, we thank you for the story of Rebecca and Isaac and Abraham and his servant. Thank you for the miracle of finding Rebecca. Thank you for her kindness. Rebecca teaches us to be kind to everyone we meet, especially strangers. And we know that your love in our hearts will bring out that kindness and everyone will see your light shining through us as we show kindness to everyone around us. In Jesus' name, amen. As usual, or has become our tradition, I have a few questions for you from this lesson. How did Abraham's servant know that Rebecca was the right girl for Isaac? Of course, he prayed and asked God for a sign. And when Rebecca did what he asked God for, he knew that she was the right person. What gift did the servant give her? A gold ring and two gold bracelets. Yes, that must have been very expensive. <laughs> Where did Abraham's servant take Rebecca? Yes, he took her back to Isaac. Do you think it was hard for Rebecca to move so far away? I think it must have been hard because she left her mom and dad and brother and moved far away to a place she had never been before. But the thing is, Rebecca trusted that God had called her to come 
and be a wife to Isaac. So when she trusted God, she knew that he would take care of her. So even when you have to leave your home and maybe go to school or go on holiday or go on a school trip, no matter where you go, trust God and he will take care of you. Thank you for joining me for today's devotion time. And until next time, take care of yourselves. Bye.